Welcome to Central Texas in another edition of Random Road Cuts. Hi there, I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here in Central Texas at San Antonio area between San Antonio and Austin. I'm here for the GSA conference, but thought I'd spend a day out in the field today, look at some of the local rocks. And we're here looking at an interesting road cut that a viewer sent me. Um, so I thought this would make a good addition. I've never been here before. The whole premise of random road cuts is we stop at some road cut that looks interesting. We make observations together, try to piece together exactly what's occurred there and hopefully come away a little bit smarter. So let's go ahead over across the road here and take a look at this road cut. So sort of our first order observations here as we kind of look across the road is, uh, well, first of all, this has got to be one of the most uh, user-friendly random road cuts I've ever seen. Not, not only is the road not that busy, but there's a sidewalk over there. So the road cuts actually set back and then there's a sidewalk and so a pedestrian friendly area where we can look at the rocks up close. Usually we're like right on the edge of the road and it's a bit spicy. But we can see these rocks are kind of buff colored overall. It looks like from uh, one end of the road cut to the other that the rocks are all the same uh, composition or type, at least just based on color. But we have this obvious zone in here just between the tree and the sign where it's a little more busted up. And we can see that the layering changes a little bit here. It looks like as we pan over towards this side of the road cut that the rock layers are nearly horizontal. They're fairly flat lying. But as we look over here, uh, just across from where we're standing here, the rocks are a little more busted up. And then we see just left of the sign there that the rocks are steeply inclined down to the left. Now this road cut looks pretty juicy and good, but it's in the sun and it's a pretty hot day. And from what I can tell, we have the same relationship and the same geology uh, over here in the shade. So if you don't mind, I think we're gonna head across to this road cut and do our up close observations here where we can do it in the shade and not sweat to death. So let's head over here, uh, check this thing out in the shade and see what we can come up with. So we'll start here at the right end of the outcrop or what, what I guess is the, the west side of the road cut. Um, so here you can see where the trees are, the nice little sidewalk. And again, here we have these beds that are dip, dipping to the west at a fairly a gentle angle. So we can see that there's some layering to these rocks. That means they might be foliated metamorphic rocks. They might be sedimentary rocks. We really won't know until we look at them up close. One other thing that I think is an important observation that we can make though at this scale is notice that these rocks have these kind of big swirly circular kind of lines running through them, which at first glance you might think is um, part of the rock's characteristics and natural, but they kind of go in different patterns and uh, orientations. And I think this is actually the way the rocks were cut. So whatever they used to cut through these rocks, maybe it was a big, literally maybe a big circular saw or something like that is um, what's left these large kind of curved uh, striations on the rock there. So that suggests that the rocks are pretty soft. So uh, given the location here in central Texas, and given um, just the way these rocks look and they're layering, suggests that they're likely to be sedimentary, but let's go ahead and look at these up close, maybe find a nice exposure or so. We do have an obvious bed here, a contact between this um, slightly more resistant unit and this unit, and in between we have what looks to be a little bit softer unit, kind of runs up the outcrop that way, kind of out of view. But here's a good place here where these cream buff rocks kind of are exposed. The grain size is fairly small. Um, I'm not seeing crystals. So I think that takes the, the whole metamorphic rock thing off the table. These look definitively like sedimentary rocks, uh, bedded or layered sedimentary rocks. There's some zones in here where they're a little bit more busted and broken, but we can still see the layering or the bedding here running through the rocks. Um, the grain size seems to be quite small, as I said, it doesn't feel like a sand size, um, anything like that. So what we might have here, and let's go ahead and test this, is we might be looking at some type of a limestone. So let's find a surface 
that we can apply our dilute hydrochloric acid to. And sure enough, we get this very strong reaction with the acid that lets us know that this rock has a high amount of calcium carbonate or calcite. And so with rocks that are completely made out of calcite, these are what we would call limestones. So this is definitely a limestone, I would say. It is kind of like fine grained, almost powdery to the touch. So it might be further um, a type of limestone we call chalk. Now you think of chalk as like, you know, powdery, like sidewalk chalk, but it's actually a rock. To geologists, a chalk is a fine grained um, limestone that's usually deposited in, uh, you know, several hundred feet of water due to the deposition of these tiny microorganisms and their calcite uh, exoskeletons. So here along the road cut, again, from top to bottom, it looks like it's all the same material. We can still see the layering or the bedding here dipping to the right or to the west. Uh, and then as we kind of work our way more to the left or the east, the, the rock gets a little bit chaotic here. We can still see the beds here, but now it looks like they're steepening. They're turning to a steeper orientation straight in front of me. And then there's this just kind of chaos zone of busted up rock. Uh, the rock seems to be quite a bit damaged here, looking from top to bottom. But then if I take a few steps further to the left or to the east, the rocks get nicely well bedded with almost perfectly horizontal layering. And that goes down uh, all the way down to the bridge down here. So I think what we have here where the rocks really change orientation and things seem to be really busted up. You can see there's blocks of rock. It, it looks more angular. As we look up along this black streak here, we really don't see any of the layering. So I think what we have is from maybe this point here where the, the layers, the horizontal layers kind of come in and end or terminate from that point there over to here where these more steep layers come in and terminate. I think we have a maybe 10 foot wide, three meter wide, uh, what we call a damage zone, basically an area where movement along a fault or some sort of structure has just busted up the rocks. This looks like uh, a faulted area, or at least we might call it a damage zone. The rocks are just really busted up. The layering is kind of lost in here. And we have this interesting, um, uh, juxtaposition or um, contrast between the steep beds on the west side of the road cut and the more or less horizontal beds there on the east side of the road cut. Really interesting uh, relationship here and a really spectacular structure. Uh, so again, thank you to the um, viewer that sent me the uh, coordinates and the location for this. So let's look at the rock in a little bit more detail through here. Sometimes in these damage zones where we see these structures, we might see some other interesting features. But I think the thing that's popping out right here, now that we've got a little better exposure in, at the rock, is we can start to see that these limestones actually have fossils. There's some big um, kind of curved shells in here. I think these might be oysters. Really nice one right here you can see that spiral kind of curve there in the shell so there's a lot of larger shell material in here again um, basically sort of uh, supporting our argument that these were deposited in some sort of ocean or marine setting so we've got fossils in here which is always exciting and fun here's this just heavily brecciated damage zone i'm not seeing any planar surfaces with lines, what we call slicken lines here. I'm just seeing uh, a change in the orientation of the rocks from these um, sort of moderately dipping units here on this end to the horizontal bedding here on the other end. But the rock seems to be pretty chewed up. Hard to say how much offset is along this structure because it's all in the same unit. It's all apparently in the same uh, formation that we see here. Um, here's more of these, yeah, here's some of the fossils actually kind of weathering out of the rock here. Here's one of the big ones right here. Can you see the little spiral right there? I don't know if that one might actually have my rock hammer with me, but you might be able to actually pull some of these out here because this stuff is pretty soft. 
So we've got some of these fossils just sort of weathering out of the outcrop. Here's one that's come out here, uh, one of these little fossils. And I think these might be oysters. I'm not a, a expert paleontologist, uh, so I am totally fine to being wrong in identifying the fossil material here. But definitely invertebrates, definitely shelly material. Here's a larger one here. Again, they seem to be all the same, um, all the same organisms. I'm not seeing other fossil types in here as of yet. Here's another kind of large one that's weathered out. So, and it looks like this little bed here, which is a little bit softer than the unit above and below, seems to be where we get a lot of these. Or maybe it's just softer and the fossils are weathering out more because as you look down into the unit in here, um, you still see some of these fossils in this little bit more compacted unit. Um, so we'll kind of work our way down. The fossils were a fun surprise. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. I was trying to convince myself this thing was a small fault and it may be, it's just hard to see offset of the layers, but you can see there's some uh, fragmentation and, or what we call brecciation. The rocks have been kind of broken along this seam. There's also some discoloration here. Uh, and if we look up here, it does look like there's a little bit of offset. So this side's higher than this side. So we've got this side moving down relative to this side, which looks like it's moved up in, con in contrast to that. So this would be a small normal fault, which is a small amount of displacement, but it looks like that actually extends across that softer layer and then heads up from there. So we might be seeing some smaller structures that are um, related to that larger structure we saw. Again, really impressive unit, the way this, you know, and again, I think it's very soft that they were able to just cut through this, leave this kind of ribbed pattern from whatever, you know, instrument or construction materials they cut into this thing. Um, soft material here, but it left this very competent uh, cliff face sort of sticking up. Uh, looks like there's maybe a little bit of calcite deposition going on on this little face here, just where the groundwaters maybe, or the waters move it down and precipitated some of that out. Yeah, that's definitely calcite there um, that's sort of coating that small little face. Yeah, and maybe working our way down a little bit further. Hard to tell if that seam there is a fault. I'm not seeing the offset in that one as readily, so I'm not quite sure with that one. More of the same. Oh, and then we have, you know, amongst all these fossils, then you get the modern, right? Then here's this like snail, a uh, modern snail sort of clinging to the rock face there. Looks like he's held on pretty tight, so I'll let him, I'll let him be. Let's see, moving down a little bit farther. We'll go down here almost to the bridge, see if we see anything else. Yeah, not a lot of fracturing in this rock, which is interesting. Um, seems to be pretty homogeneous, the same type of material throughout. There is this kind of large fracture here, which could be uh, partially due to Groundwater moving through it, notice it has some coating. There's some coating on the layers here, like it changes from the rock material here um, into this more kind of milky surface here, what you might see in a cave. In fact, as I look up here, this is great. Uh, I'm actually seeing what I would call like in a cave, like a flow stone, some of this patterned uh, mineral deposition along the both walls too. It's on both sides of the this large open fracture or joint. So it's likely this is a, a big groundwater pathway. And again, more of the fossils showing up here in this, in this limestone. Uh, very cool. Oh, this, this could be, hmm, what do we think here with this fracture? I'm wondering if this little zone here matches up with that zone there, but it doesn't really seem like it goes through. So I'm not totally willing to call that a fault but again looks like we've got groundwater that's moved through there there's some very uh needle-like fibers of calcite that have grown along the fracture so you can see these little sharp needles 
of calcite. I wonder if we can get any of that out and look at it up close. Um, it's kind of in there pretty good. Maybe this little piece. Yeah, I can't quite get that out. Uh, but if we go look up here, I can barely reach that high, but hopefully you can see some of these fibrous layers. Oops, sorry. Up here, coating uh, this fracture. So calcite is the thing that makes up the rock itself, but then the rocks experience some of these fracturing events and groundwater dissolving the calcite is re-precipitating some of that material out on the faces or the surfaces of these fractures. Another good one here uh, showing some of the calcite deposition along the fracture. And again, a lot of the kind of similar uh, patterns you might see in a, in a cave system. Looks like we have a bit of a more um, kind of fossil rich layer here. Here's some more of the, what I'm calling oysters for now. Another one right there, kind of a band of those coming across. Very cool. And that pretty much takes us to uh, the end of the outcrop and the beginning of this nice little bridge that they have here. So pretty spectacular, like um, really cool stuff that we were able to see in there. Um, and again, what's fun about doing random road cuts is the, the surprises, right? You just never know what you're going to see. There's some really sharp little calcite crystals on the wall. Can you see those? These little sharp little faces here along this open fracture. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for joining me on this fun little adventure here in the central Texas, looking at another road cut. You just never know what you're going to find. Uh, hopefully you're able to make some observations with me, piece this together. Hopefully we agree. If we don't, that's OK. Any uh, comments you want to leave below are welcomed. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for your support of the channel and take care.